I'll probably get a verse from like XXX. Really? Well, I didn't expect that. I mean, yeah. What's going on, everybody? You guys are watching 101, and I'm here with South Central's own Duckworth. Hey. How's it going, man? How was your stay in Vancouver for the last, I don't know, two, three hours? Yeah, it's been like three or four. I, I've done nothing. I've um, mic checked, I've rehearsed, and now I'm here. Yeah, and we're literally right across from Fortune Sound Club where you're performing yeah. um, today. Um, and yeah, I just, I just wanted to know, like, I think you're the perfect mix of hip-hop and funk. <laughs> so I wanted, to, I wanted to, like, what side do you lean a bit more towards? Uh, no side specifically, just music. Yeah. In general, I pull from everywhere. Uh, okay, so everywhere. so South Central LA, what's their funk scene really like? Cause I don't funk scene. Yeah, cause I when I hear like South Central LA music, I think of like gangster rap. Um, my guy Cause he does music from there. Um, so what's their funk scene like? Uh, I mean, well, if you wanna say South Central, that's more so like of a like a '90s type situation. That's like G funk. Mm -hmm. So like their version of funk was like Nate Dogg. Um, 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 I'm drawing a blank right now. Um, uh, ah, DJ Quick. Yeah. Um, who else is doing like G Funk? Um, I forgot bro, his name. Battle Cat. Okay. He was like a big like like G Funk like producer and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, that that was their version. Snoop two uh, and three, okay, they're okay, all yeah. doing like like uh, like G Funk. Yeah. Like even Snoop will like kind of like do some like Parliament Funk daily like George Clinton, mm. like a, ooh boy, like <laughs> that type stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's our version of it. Yeah, so. and that kind of made you want to do the, the funk style or no? No, I mean, I was raised around like just like that original sound, like whether it be like funk or so, you know, I would just always hear it. I dived like deeper into funk as I got older. And then like also like Outkast was like a great segue okay. into like mm -hmm. funk. So yeah, I just wanted to go further in it. Did the church have anything to influence that or no? Yeah, definitely. Really? Definitely. I mean, gospel, soul, funk, it's all intertwined. Yeah. To me, it all kind of sounds the same. It's just funk has a little bit more slump to it. Mm -hmm. Subject matter is definitely different. <laughs> yeah. But as far as like the sound goes, as far as like the composition goes and stuff like that, it all, it all gives you like this like mm, type feeling, you know? Mm -hmm. so, just like makes you want to like kind of dance? Dance or, you know, frown your face up or, or you just feel it in some type yeah, of way. Like, it, may, it make you move your body in some type of yeah, way. Yeah, that's true. I see that. Um, yeah. And like speaking of that, you even said in your XXL pitch, I was watching, you were like, um, I don't want to make the whole gangster rap thing. I'm just more about making people dance, like making them move and stuff. Yeah. How did you really like avoid that type of like lifestyle growing up? Because like you said, you grew up in South Central. Yeah. Um, how did you like really focus on just the music? Um, um, my mom just kind of like, she didn't expose me to a lot. I, I say pretty sheltered when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, what I was exposed to was very specific. And that kind of led me to have a different perspective on life, despite what was like the surroundings around me. Mm -hmm. But the street that we lived on in South Central wasn't like a messed up street. Oh, it was, it was like, like, as you went further down, it got like crazy. Or if you really? like hit this wrong alleyway, yeah. then it got crazy and stuff. What's the specific area? Uh, it's like the 90s. So it's like you have like you have starting from like like ten all the way to like the hundreds, oh, and okay. then um, between there is like you have like different hoods. Like you got like twenties, you got forties, you got sixties, you got nineties, uh, and yeah, all these different like hoods represent different yeah. type of vibes. But I mean similar stuff, you know. But um, they were dominated by like like just gang activity mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah. um, that's what kind of like like just created that whole feel. Yeah. It. But there's also a lot of good stuff too, like the ice cream truck or like the, <laughs> go, like um. You still going, remember that? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then like going to like the swimming pool during the summer. Yeah. And it's just like when you growing up and you just like just getting curious about girls and stuff, and it's just like y'all fondling each other in the pool when you're younger and yeah. stuff. It was like it was like a rite of passage for like all the young homies. Okay. It was a swimming pool. Gotcha. Yeah, and I can already imagine that you probably go back often, right? Uh, not to the swimming pool. Okay, but, yeah. <laughs> just to the area, the area. But to, yeah, to the area. My mom yeah. lives there still, so yeah. I still go there. Mm. And uh, you were talking about your mom. That kind of made me think. I read somewhere that your mom didn't really like you listening to hip hop music. Yeah. So what was the specific reason for that? Was it like the cuss words or? My mom just was raised Christian, so uh -huh. yeah, it was secular. Like if it wasn't about Jesus, if it didn't have to, if if yeah, there was definitely secular situations like cursing or sex or anything like that or anything that just really didn't talk about the righteousness of god mm, which <laughs> it is wasn't like being played yeah it was like a lot of uh, things 
Or I mean, but she did like play other things. Like she like, she played classical, and like that's just more of like of an open range. Uh-huh. Of a, uh, it's an open arrangement, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So it's mm. it's it, but it lacked some type of lack of words, and if it was words, it was like operatic. So they were singing in Italian, so we didn't know what the hell they were talking <laughs> about anyway. That's tough, dude. Yeah. Um. So how would you even listen to hip hop? Like, would you sneak tapes into the washroom and just like quickly? Uh, my sister would listen to hip hop. Oh, what kind of stuff did did you get a sneak listen to? Uh, Joe Scott, Erica, Outkast, The Outcast Roots, or, uh, a lot of Common, um, Pink Floyd, Jimi Hendrix. Oh, um, really? That's weird. Yeah. Oh, I kind of see that in your music now. Pink yeah, Floyd. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. So all those like she listens to a lot of good music. Oh, and Gorillaz too. Okay. But she listens to a lot of good music, and so that's what I was exposed to was anything she would listen to. Yeah. I was listening to. Or like my dad would play like jazz music, or like he would play like Hendrix as well, and mm-hmm. like he would listen to a lot of Bob Marley. Mm-hmm. So okay. it was nothing but good music that was around me. Mm, so some reggae in there a bit too. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, oh. yeah. That really influenced me, but he definitely listens to a lot of reggae. Yeah, I feel you on that. I feel like um, I feel like you can educate me more on like the fun side of things. So if I gave you a scenario where you had to, you had like your dream tape, but there was two um, funk artists, two rappers, and then uh, one producer, like. Who would be in that in that circle? Um, Boosie, of course. If you want to talk about like funk, funk, like yeah, yeah like Boosie, um, and uh, George and Mudra. Okay. Boosie Collins will be uh, playing bass and on vocals. George and Mudra will be producing and doing vocals mm-hmm. and everything, and just being an amazing person that she is. Yeah, and the and two rap artists. Um. Also, you can mention yourself if you want. I thought I was already on it. Okay, yeah, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm arranging it. I'm on it. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, rap artist? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's, 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 it's some good, it's some good, it's some really tight ass rappers right now. I just want to pick the right. Dead or Alive, too, by the way. Dead or Alive. Yeah, so that makes it even more broad. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'll probably get a verse from like XXX. Really? Well, yeah, I didn't yeah, expect that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I, dude, don't get it wrong. Like, just because, like, and I, even the stuff I'm making now is, like, harder. Like, the stuff I'm making now is not exactly, like, f- funk or mm-hmm. funky. Mm-hmm. It's just some hard hitting shit. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, no, I love it. I love, like, Trippy Red, mm. um, you know, Travis, like, XXX, like, all them. It's tight. Yeah. It's, it's just a different feel. And it reminds me of punk anyway. So, yeah. And that pulls from my punk side. Oh, uh, Rappers, I still don't know. I, hmm, maybe Kendrick, I guess. Kendrick, Kendrick, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, Kendrick's tight. Yeah. But that's like flexing. I'm trying to think of somebody who's like not like. Yeah, because you can't just go for the Kendricks, the. Yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I would like. I would have Frank spit a 16. Yeah. <laughs> spit, oh, not the chorus, but spit a, spit a I have him spit a 16. Yeah. After hearing Carousel, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. On Travis uh, Scott's album, you heard Carousel. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah after yeah. hearing like him spit mm. on that, like yeah, that makes sense. But he did uh, that. What's that one ten minute song that's on the uh, Future tape? Uh, Oldie? Oldie. I know he was on the freestyle. Yeah, Oldie. he did like a sixteen on there. That shit was hella tight. Yeah, cool. And, if, and and there was one producer on it. Um. Shit. All right, so we got the funk in there. Uh-huh. Um. Producer. I feel like I know who you're Can it be? Play. Can it be a mix? Yeah. Cause I would say it would be like, I would I would have like Pharrell produce it. Okay, that makes sense. But like, 2000 and like 15 Pharrell. Not not the current Pharrell. I like the current Pharrell, but yeah, Pharrell is like he's in the middle right now. Uh huh. Like he's getting to somewhere, mm, but okay. it's like right now he's tinkering with like new sounds and yeah, like new he'll hit it. Too. And new artists, yeah, he'll hit it. Every once in a while, but I think right now he's like in the middle. That's what I think. That's for me. My observation from Pharrell is it's always like cycles. Yeah. Like he'll be here, then he'll tinker, then here. Then yeah. Tinker. So yeah, definitely. Um, mm-hmm. Like there's this um, song that never came out by Lupe that Pharrell did. I think it's called uh, Snare. Uh, or, I don't know. It's Hi Hats or Snare. Something Snares. I don't know whatever it was called. Oh, yeah. um, and then there's the other song, uh, Don't Stop. Yeah. And I think that's. For real, produced down too, but that's CRS. But, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, you know CRS. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You, you really so like, like, like for all, I can tell. Yeah, no, like I mean, I, cause I, I he makes hits. Mm, okay, yeah. That's that's the big. And he he makes my favorite hits. Like 
there's a lot of different hit makers, but it's like his, the colors that he chooses, the color palette that he pulls from in his hits, they're, they're super attractive. Yeah, that's a cool little circle to make like a dream album. That would be dream album for yeah, sure. That no, would be dream I, album I totally sure. see that. Sure. You know how you mentioned before how you, you don't just make funk, but you have like a lot of hard hitting stuff too. Yeah. Um, I was listening to your album and a lot of it is like, like you said, hard, hard hitting stuff and then there'll be like a beat switch up and then it'll go to like the quietest thing, the most like melodic, like slow thing. Yeah. So like um, those beat switch ups, is that something that you've borrowed from like older records? Um, older records outside of my music? Yeah. Um, not so much. It just, I'm always trying to like change it up, switch it up. Yeah. Just like the, the beats. <laughs> yeah. It's always trying to like challenge myself. It, it's just this like undying need to just keep challenging myself yeah. and keep challenging the listener. Yeah. I always kind of keep it as a surprise. Like my favorite movies are the movies where it's like the plot twist happens without mm. me like predicting it. If I, was I can thinking predict that, it, yeah. then it's boring. It reminded but me of kind of like a horror movie when I when I hear some mm -hmm. of your... It goes, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like, I, I <laughs> like nowhere, that. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm also a troll too. So I think oh. that's, I think it's kind of funny when you like think the song's gonna go a certain way and it just yeah. like ends up being like some hard hitting shit. Yeah. Or it's hard and then it goes into something very like, like minimal and so yeah on. like like even like fall back that must be so fun to perform because everyone's just going crazy yeah, and out of nowhere you just, yeah, just troll like, them what? And stuff. yeah yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it's fun it's fun it's definitely yeah. fun but that's also classical too because classical starts out it can start off big then it can shrink uh -huh. then you just get moments 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 then it just builds to grand or even sometimes it just be big then it just drops super hard yeah. you know i think that's tight I got you on that, yeah. I got you. Usually people ask like, oh, how'd you get started with music and all that? But I kind of wanted to know, two years ago, you actually wanted to stop doing music. And what what was that all about? Uh, I just, I, it wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah? I think, was it two years ago? Maybe, I felt like it was, maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I was just kind of, I was over it. Like any other person, it's yeah. just, when you see yourself at a certain level, and you don't see like, you don't see that happening, like, and you, and you, but I think it's, it's not even just that because everything takes its natural course is when you've seen people who like maybe not, not have the same integrity that they put in the music and it's just like it's like the same like story like just happening over and over again mm -hmm. you're just like dude I'm over it like mm -hmm. I'm about to just like do some other stuff but one my shit picked up <laughs> after yeah. that and then Two, it, it, I feel like that's happening. It, that happened in anything. Like, I have, if I was a fashion designer, yeah. you know, like I see other brands like getting lit who just don't use the same like like textures and like patterns and like certain like quality of of garment yeah. that I use. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, and they may not have like put the same intentions into it and the time and detail and everything like that. Like, uh -huh. I'll come through with like a a jacket that's like you know it could be a, a regular like biker one like this, but yeah. like you open it on the inside and it's just like a it's like a, a pink like like silk you know or like yeah. a pink like a or it could even be like a velvet or something and then like the pockets are lined with like some type of like pattern and like in the inside it's like a gold stitch yeah you know and then like the dude who just like does like fake leather yeah you know what I'm saying it just like puts a quick tag on it and just like sells it for like eight winning you know mm -hmm. it, could, it could be anything and it's just it's always that that story but the whole thing about those guys is like here today gone tomorrow yeah you know so it's just like the people who actually have quality I find like find a way to like make it through and then their stuff kind of lasts a bit longer mm -hmm. but you also have to like kind of bend a little bit mm -hmm. you know just you have to pull from the bro you have to figure out why is bro winning with the fake leather and the quick tag you know like yeah. well, hey, why is he winning you know and it's just like you figure it out and you're like okay cool how do I implement that into mine without losing my integrity uh -huh. And I heard that even when you wanted to quit doing music, you were gonna go towards like design. Yeah. Um, mm. So because of that, are you really involved in things like your music videos, how that's gonna look like, your uh -huh. merch? Definitely. Yeah. I just shot the video for Fallback, and I. Oh really? I uh, I I wrote it from beginning to end, mm. and like drew it out everything as much as possible, and then I um uh, I had like a creative team who like I just like take the ideas and be like, does this make sense? And they're just like, yeah, and they take it, and then they add more to it. Then I, um, I have a, uh, my friend uh, Dustin, who's a cinematographer, and I'm just like, how do I make this make sense in a in a in a film type of uh, you know? How do I make it make sense? Yeah. In the film world, in the cinema world, and he's just like, okay, cool. So they they add this to it, and then we build it. But yeah, nah, a lot of the ideas are like either it's like a concept that I came up with, or it's a full on like plot mm -hmm. that I figured out. Mm -hmm. so, okay, yeah. But sometimes it takes a minute. Like Fallback was not easy to write. That yeah. took it. I've been plotting that one since early this year. It just had to make sense because yeah. it's such a big song. And it's like, for me, it's like, I, I would rather take a hella long 
to like make a video that a person can revisit 20, 30 years later, yeah. rather than make some like quick like dance in front of the camera. Yeah. It get like hella like like views and then that's it. You don't want to look at it again, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I remember the reason, I was watching this video of the making of Thriller and he said the reason why Michael wanted to put so much time and effort into Thriller is so he, he can challenge other artists to step their their, dang, their game up. And that video like, lasted like so long. You can come back to it, not yeah. just on Halloween. Uh -huh. You can come back to it anytime. And that's it's still true. like, oh my gosh, this is so tight. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of like what I take and I add that to mine and it's, yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, I could definitely see you're totally involved in like all aspects of art in general. But mm. again, man, I want to thank you and your shows today. I hope you kill it. Yeah. You know, second time in Vancouver. Like, I hope the fans love you. But yeah, I really appreciate you, Duckworth. Man, I appreciate thank you. It, dude. You guys are watching one on one, and this is Duckworth. Yo, thank you guys for watching that interview. Duckworth, if you're seeing this right now, I really rock with you, man. You put in a lot of time and effort into your music, and uh, and I think that's super special. So I also want to let you guys know that from now on, I'm going to be picking a comment down below, and I'll put it at the end of the video um, as the top comment. So comment all your opinions right now. Hopefully, you'll get chosen. Otherwise, you know what? Thank you, Pablo, for letting me use the back of your store as an interview location. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, man. That's really important. Just click, click the subscribe button and watch the last video we did.